Hey everyone, happy new year and welcome to the first tutorial for 2024. Today's tutorial is going to be very beginner friendly Cinema 4D Redshift tutorial and it is based on a campaign I did back in 2021 for the Microsoft events team and I had quite a few people asking me to make a tutorial about this campaign so I've decided just to do the displacement part first and then maybe in my future tutorials will touch on the other elements from the campaign. Speaking of future tutorials, I am so excited to share with you all the new tools and software alternatives I've discovered in the last year. These tools are just game changers in terms of speeding up my workflow and most of them are free or almost free. I'm also planning to add way more freebies on my gum road, so make sure to check that out. But first, let's get back into the tutorial. I'm going to start in Photoshop because this is sort of the meat and potatoes of how this effect is created. And first of all, make sure that your Photoshop file is very big. I've made mine 5000 by 5000, so 5K. And that allows for really nice intricate detail when you bring it into cinema. So the second thing is to make sure your files are black and white. In this specific one, we obviously it was a Microsoft job. So each of these textures had a rationale and it was inspired by the different industries of Microsoft. So for example, the manufacturing was inspired by raw materials like stone or oil or coal. The agricultural one was inspired by aerial shots of landscapes. This specific one was rice paddy fields in Indonesia. And I just had a whole bunch that I super roughly just chopped up and made a collage of. So you'll see that's pretty imperfect, but these imperfect things are actually what made it really nice in cinema. I also had a Moody's design di or a Moody's diagram for engineers. There's some Excel spreadsheets that was just inverted so that we can get the right um, results in cinema. This one was inspired by uh, product management or finance. We also had one that's inspired for um, structural engineers or architectures. So it's more like an abstract version of a building. And then just for this specific tutorial, I made some extra logos just so that we can test it out. I have some type because you know with graphic packages, there's always a need of type. And then also if you need type that is live, that maybe you have a project that you need to localize at the end of the day, make sure that your live text is actually a smart object because you can't have a live text in, um, in cinema. So that way you can just easily double click, change the word to something else and then save it out again. But um, just important to know that it needs to be, a, it can't be on an alpha channel. It needs to be on white and black. And then, as I said, smart objects, use smart objects for live text. So as you can see, easy peasy, build your textures, make sure you name your layers perfectly. And now let me show you how to bring it into cinema. I'm going to start this from scratch and we will start with a plane that is in this drop down. And the plane is going to be 100, 200 centimeters by 200 centimeters. And let's put it on this setting here and display uh, quick shading lines so you can see the geometry. And I want it to be up, so I'm going to put it on Z, on Z, as they say in Europe. Um, so you can see this is 10 by 10 in width and height. And I'm using option to uh, rotate around. And then usually the first thing I do is I add the lights. So I'm going to add two lights. The one is going to be R for rotate, rotated. And then... Uh, R E for move up. And then I'm just going to scale this down a little. All right. And uh, just for now, this is put on two. I know it's super hot, these lights. So 100 is way too high. So I'm going to control drag and create another one. And this one I'm going to move down and on the side. So this is sort of like a, like a rim light or a side light so let's call this one just so we know top top light and left light and then a null just to group them all so it's nice and clean light right drag this to the bottom and let's add also just a, a globe a dome light 
this dome light is just to add a little bit of a fill so it should be very low like tiny 0 0.1 or 0 0.9 and um for the lights i always like to add just for now we'll we'll tweak this color just a teeny tiny little bit of blue coldness and the top light a teeny tiny bit of warmth and i know we can't see anything because my my redshift's not set up yet but just just so i know it's it's sort of it's going to be fine if i start rendering so this is basically the setup so easy right now let's get into redshift so redshift if you don't see it you go here in redshift uh redshift rs render view and it will pop up and usually i'll just drag this little hamburger icon and i put it here on the right next we are going to add a material and this little icon here is the material icon so if you open it up you'll get the viewer for the material and we don't have anything in there yet because we need to create our first one and i'm going to create, create materials and then you are going to create uh not the standard material but the <laughs> material material um so now we are adding the material on this plane and let's just call this uh texture microsoft texture right and the reason i picked this specific material is let me open it up double click um because this one actually has presets that i like for, especially if you're a beginner just to help you just start somewhere and you'll see if you drop this down you'll see a whole bunch here and usually i just start with plastic because it has a little bit of shine and it's not too shiny and it's not too complicated so let's just do plastic and let's change the color by just pick something a little darker and with uh Plastic usually is not as shiny, but we will definitely maybe bring down the shininess. You can see the specular highlight here, but we'll we'll tweak that a little bit later. And then I'm going to close this just so you can see the next step is going to be to add a redshift tag onto my plane. Now, the reason for this redshift tag is the redshift tag almost kind of override the geometry in the scene. So to get that really nice texturing, super fine detail, you do need actually a lot of geometry. But because we have our magical redshift tag, we don't need geometry in the scene. It will just be happening in the real render, in the real time render. So we're going to right click, re go to render tags, and then scroll down to RS objects. It will appear next to your plane, and then click on that, and then you'll go here in geometry, and you will override. The geometry you'll enable tessellation then screen space adaptive switch i think that we should switch that off but i'll come back then in the minimum edge length we'll do zero and in a displacement you're enable and we'll come back and tweak this but this is sort of the basic setup that i have all right so there we are we'll, you'll see there's these round corners and it's because there are more geometry now let me let me show you basically let me switch this off so it's back to straight i see this almost like this subdivision surface so when you put that in here see how it goes round but it also adds more geometry in the see how there are more squares and if i add make it this four it gets super round um so that's kind of what i see is happening when you use the um redshift tag but we don't want all that geometry so we just want simple geometry to keep it nice and light so we are going to activate it in the actual uh redshift so let's go here override again let's go back to what we had perfect okay so we know everything is ready for our displacement and our displacement is going to be in our dis we're going to click on our node editor like this and let me move this node editor to, I'm just gonna drag this hamburger icon again to this bottom bit. So we have a nice view of what we're doing. I can open this up a little. And basically displacement is this little, if you middle mouse click, you can zoom in, in and out, is this little purple thing. So it's not in the color, it's actually just a way to tell it to 
it is a black and white map to tell the material to push in or out to create a texture. So to do that, we are going to bring in our Photoshop file. And it is so easy. You really just drag it into this area. See how it's hovering and it is release. And there we have it. So you'll see that the default is going to be the whole Photoshop file. And you can see that all the layers in Photoshop is actually individually also in here. So you can pick and choose which layer you want to use as your displacement layer. And let me show you how it looks. So I'm going to start with just creating a displacement node. So you would think that you can just drag this in here, but no, you have to add a displacement node. So double click, start place, uh, typing displacement. And this node will tell it to connect and what to do with it. So you're going to create those two. And then here you, you just drag this little arm and you add it to texture map. So basically texture map, it's seen as a texture map. And now you add it to your output. And voila, there you already see something. So I can already see that also my light is too low. So let's now at this point, before we start tweaking anything, Let's just get the lights ready so that we have instant satisfaction, as I always say. So let's add a little bit of the left light, little the top light, let's zoom in. And you can now see that nice shadowing. Now, if you have, have it to this point and it looks ugly, usually, I would say the first reason is, is because your lights are in the wrong spot. So let me just quickly show you. If you have this light and you have it right in front of the camera, let me show you how I, let me just quickly do this. So instead of rotating here, I'm just going to rotate here and that will just stay on the pivot point. So I'm going to do, uh, maybe I should rotate it a little bit. And I'm really just doing this so that you can see what it looks like if you have the light straight on. It's not nice. See how it, it's, you don't pick up any of the coloring of the shadowing. It's just very flat and there's just a lot of detailing that's missing. This is kind of the light you use for portrait lighting because you want to um, make the imperfections of someone's skin disappear, but we don't want to make the inf imperfections disappear. We want to actually show the imperfections. So I'm going to undo, undo, undo. So having the lights at the top and on the left is sort of the basics of making your anything look nice. But of course you can now start playing with where are they placed and what color they are and are they maybe another one and the shape of the light and all those kind of things adds even more detailing and layering to the lighting. All right, so this is sort of the basics and it looks pretty nice. So now I want to show you how powerful these Photoshop layers are because in the past, I usually had to save it out one thing at a time and then bring it in and then test it out and then go save it out in Photoshop again. And it, it's just really a pain in the butt. So I'm going to show you my way of working around it. And I, I think most people are doing it this way now, but I only recently learned this, this method. So um, let me show you. So as we know, we have this default one that we've now used is the actual, what it looks like in the, um, in Photoshop. So we have this default setting. It's all the layers together, how it looks in Photoshop. So you can always go back to Photoshop and you can go and change it there and save it out again and it will update here. Let's zoom out again. And this is now where displacement blenders are going to be very helpful. So the displacement blender is, see it almost like a Photoshop file that takes two layers and put them together. So I'm going to take these two. I'm going to call this one, let's say the, the base is the texture, base texture. And then I'm going to uh, make a square around them and control drag to duplicate them. And this one is going to be my logo. Because say, for example, you have a sports graphics package, you are going to probably have 52 
logos you have to change for each team and you know everything needs to be very easily replaceable so i'm going to make this my logo layer and this is my background so we have two displacements but to blend these two we're going to need a displacement blender so double click again displacement blender there we go and then let's plug break this one you can just drag it on top and then these two guys needs to go into this displacement blender. So I'm going to add. And then adding this one in my, actually, I want my base texture. Let's turn these around. So I want that raw stone. I want that to be my base. So I'm going to add that here. And I want the logo to be the input zero. Layer one, zero. All right. Now for the logo, I'm going to go here and pick the logo. So say we want the Microsoft to start off with. And then for my base, let me zoom out again. For my base texture, I want to use the that stone texture, which is this manufacturing. And now you will see the logo will disappear. And why does it disappear? It disappears because this texture is actually going straight on top of the the logo. And you'll see if it's it's like Photoshop layers where you don't you can't see through it. So if I look at the blender, if you look at layer zero and I just move just around 0 0.5, you'll see that the te the textures gets blended. It's almost like there is a transparency for both of them. So they're both 50% transparent. But this specific um, effect is not what I want because, you know, as we know, clients don't like things going through their logos and they want their logos to be very clean. So, but I still want that nice beveling that's happening. And you'll see if I bring this blend weight all the way to the end, the stone texture will disappear and the Microsoft logo will be more prominent. But that's also not what I want. So I'm going to leave this all, they're both on one because I want them both to be full on, fully visible. And I am going to use a mask to kind of cut out the Microsoft logo from the stone texture. And to do that, we are going to use this blend weight. See this one here? And blend weight is... I, I see it as a mask. It could have might as well just be called a mask. That's how I see it. And I'm going to use this logo as well. So I'm not just using it for displacement. I'm also using it for the, ble for the blend weight. So let's see what happens if I add it in here. See how it kind of cuts out the logo, but it's cutting out the wrong way because I want the texture to be on the outside, not the inside. And that's a very easy fix. You, we are just going to use a invert node. So to invert this one, we want it to be black on the outside, white on the inside. I'm going to double click, type invert. And we're gonna create this invert node between the logo and the blend weight. So we just kind of make it a filter. So it goes through the invert first and then to the blend weight. And let's save. I think sometimes it takes a bit of time. The first time I did this, I was wondering why is it not working, but then I, let's, let's reload it here. There we go. All right, so if you have that issue, just reload it, maybe save, it will eventually kick in. So there we, get, there we have it. Now, this is now a very nice setup because now we can really go crazy with changing this background. So we can, let me, so let's test this out. I'm going to change this to that rice paddy field texture with the agricultural theme. And look how nice that looks. And I just love how these kind of reflections, where in the texture, it's, I think it's just white. So there's not much imperfections. So you can kind of see how glossy that area is. And then where there's a bit more grass, it picks up the roughness and it really creates a nice tactile feeling that almost feels handmade, like someone 
had a stencil on some wet clay or wet cement and made the shape. Now let's test this also out with the logo because this whole reason for us <laughs> redoing this whole thing is so we can easily update the logo. So let's see if we do an Apple logo. Yeah, nice. Uh, or if you have text, let's do a text just for kicks and giggles. Um, let's do the now, like if, if you have like a broadcast package or a network ID. So now I'm going to show you how to do this blue elements that is um, part of the design. As you can see, we have that nice blue that is almost at the base of the texture and then the peaks stays gray. And I'm going to use um, a material blender for that. So just as a quick F FYI and tip, if you are busy building these displacement maps and you wanna know what this guy looks like, just press on this little tiny S and that stands for solo. And you can see what just this texture does. And it is very helpful. If you start having a very big spider web of textures nodes plugged in and plugged out, you'll start seeing that it gets very confusing very quickly. So it's for me, it's very nice just to um, solo it out and know what each one does. And then always just like refresh. If you see something weird like this, just refresh and you'll, it'll get back to um, what you've seen before. And then another quick tip too, this is, this one is actually pretty simple, but if you really find like your, your brain starting to hurt, just group them and then they get way more simpler. So you just can make a square around all of them and then right click and you can go group nodes and see how it makes it a ni one nice tiny little group. And then all of a sudden your textures are so much neater you can keep going so now we, we've done this one we know it we can even call it displays and to go into it again you just double click and it will open up and you see these little breadcrumbs here that will just show you how to get back so to get back you do that and i think there's a way to get out of this group ungroup nodes yes this one and then you just back to the ungroup i'm going to leave it ungroup for now because i'm actually going to need these textures for my um blue color that I want to bring in and just duplicate this plastic color by control drag. And then let's call this blue. And the color we can actually use our original and just pick the color here like that. And let's test it out by just replacing the plastic yeah perfect so the way we're going to do this is using a material blender and it's actually exactly like we've done this displacement blender so i'm gonna double click i'm gonna type in blender so instead of displacement blender i'm picking material blender i'm going to add the i want the blue to be my base so i'm adding in my base color and I want the plastic to be the material color one. So let's put that in. It's gonna be red because I just broke the link. So let's put it back in. Now, like before, we need to use the blend color to get some of the gray plastic back. And what I'm going to use is a, um, first of all, I, I will just show you, I first started just by using this base texture again. Remember, this is the, um, the rice paddy design. And I'm just going to use this as my blend color, just so you can see what happens. And this is how I originally started it and I couldn't get quite the right results and I'll show you how I fixed it. So with the reference, you can see that the logo needs to be super clean and the base is blue and then the peaks are the gray ones. So it's almost like a mountain and the points, the highest points are gray. And if you look at, let me refresh this you'll see that if I look, zoom into my logo or my word, um, you'll see that there are some imperfections. And, you know, I think for a word, it's fine. But if it's a logo, you know, as, as I mentioned, clients don't like things going through their logo. So we want the, the 
word itself needs to be very clean and blue. And that's what I want. So the way to do that is using a color layer. And a color layer is really like a little bit like Photoshop. Color layer. Because, and let me do the first one first. So let's put this in my base. So the color is going through my base and then this goes to my blend color, like your mask, basically. Let me solo it. Oh, and the reason it's black is because in layer one, this is enabled. So, and there's a black color. So, so we know this is color layer one. And what I want is I want the word or the logo to be pure white so that there's no um, gray color coming into it. Because remember the reference, we want it to be clean and blue. And that logo, I'm going to use the same logo here and put it in my layer color. So let's put it in color one and layer one color. And let's enable that. And you can play around with these um, settings. The setting I want is screen. And then I also want it to be inverted. So we can even just go steal this one and control drag and then just and then just put it as a filter in between. So now we have a nice logo is very clean and the background has a texture. And let's unsolo this to see what happens. Oh, I know why it's not right. Is it? We want the logo to be, am I doing it right? Maybe we don't need it to be inverted. It needs to be black because we want the logo to be multiplied here. Let's see if that, yeah, this is actually how we need it. Sorry, no invert needed. Let me just solo this again. We want the blue to come through on the lettering. So the blue should be black. And then everywhere where it's black, it's going to be blue. And where it's gray and white is where it's going to be um, gray. Now, the one issue is that, let me just refresh. Now, the one issue is that if you look at our reference, and let me just put it side by side, you'll see that our peaks are way more gray. And that's just because we need to crunch the color a little bit. And with that, I'm going to use a ramp between the base color and the color node. So let me show you how a ramp works. So a ramp is just a very simple ramp. Like, as you know, what the ramp is, it's like a gradient. Let me add this into the alt input. Let me solo it. So the ramp is taking the black and white image and use the blacks from the left to the right. So uh, let me let me show you with a, a color re, uh, gradient. Otherwise, it's very hard to understand how it works. But I'm going to use this color gradient. And you'll see that the far left is black. And the black is the darkest point of the image. And as it goes lighter, it goes down this gradient. So the red would be, you know, like middle grays. The yellow is lighter grays. And then the white would be the the brightest part of the black and white image. For example, if I make this blue, let's see, if I make this blue, you'll see that the peaks will be blue. And if I scoot this up a little to the left, let's take that white out. You will see that it gets bluer and bluer because now I'm crunching the gradient or the ramp where the brighter bits are bluer and bluer. And I, if I take yellow out, it will even get more pronounced. So there's no more steps, uh, a yellow step. We'll kind of like skip the yellow step. But we need a black and white map because that's how the blend color work or the mask. So I'm just going to undo, undo, undo. The ramp is going to just help crunching the whites a little bit. So I'm going to use this white and just scoot it all the way to the left. See how pronounced the, the white bits come now? And that's the part that I want to be gray. And now we can kind of play around, but um, just I just wanted to solo it out so you can see what this ramp is doing. So let me just uncheck that. And now we can play around until we find the solution that feels like the reference. And I think I quite liked that the peaks are pretty 
high in gray. So the gray is pretty prominent. So there's even more contrast in the word. So now for fun, let's just quickly pick some of these um, textures just to test it out and see what it looks like. So I have this manufacturing one with a stone. And I'm going to change the logo one to say um, Nike. And also let's just try something different, maybe with Apple. See how easy that is? It's just a quick drop down and select and you don't need to go to Photoshop or any extra step. You can just really do it right here in the software. And here's a few other ones I rendered and just for the combination of these two nodes. I quite like this. I quite like this engineering one with this, the lines. And yeah, so, so easy, easy peasy. But I would also just add a camera and I'll show you how to do that. You go redshift, camera standard, look through it by activating it. And let's make it around 80 a random lens number, but I want it to be quite narrow and optical, check the bokeh, make it super small. So you're basically dialing down the aperture to increase the depth of field. And then we click on this little dot just to get um, the focus area. But yeah, the things you can play around with is the, dis the types of dis displacement. So for example, right now, the logo is going in so let's, if I crank this up a lot, maybe I'll play around with these settings. You'll see that it will go in even more. And if I go the opposite way, so I want it to be pillow emboss. So now I'm going to go into the minus. Let me just zoom in a little so you can see. And see now my logo is going out. Let's even pronounce it even more so that it's clear. So now it's almost like a sticker. So it's all, all about the kind of vibe you want to go for. Um, I just love the fact that everything is so procedural and you can just switch it out, switch it out for with a click of a button to another logo. So I can see this is definitely super helpful for those graphics packages with a gazillion words or the sports graphics packages with all those team logos that is just so much work. So yeah, that's all for today. I will upload this to my Gumroad, but I'll also have some freebies there. So make sure to check that out. Until next time, goodbye.